Greetings, this is Jim Lindsay. This is day two of topic four. The topic being, should artificial intelligence be subject to regulation? So let's get started. This is a reminder what we covered in day one. And if you don't remember all this very clearly, go back and watch, go watch the day one lesson and look at that material please but we covered those four ideas and then we looked at many different examples you guys did a, re a very good job of identifying examples of AI implementations and the benefits of those potential threats from those and that's uh, what we did on day one so uh, that's where we are we want to pick up from here so again if you're not completely comfortable with all of those ideas as well as remembering you know at least the examples that you looked at with uh, your teammates or the the people at your table um, then go back and and take a look at the day one stuff um, as we go forward I want to introduce you to some people all right these are my neighbors uh, you have Chuck and you have Tim those are the the the, the uh, dads of the family those are the guys I talk to. And with this whole COVID-19 thing, I've been able to, uh, you know, we've, we've interacted a lot more than we, we normally do just because everybody is home. Um, you know, there's everything is shut down and so everybody is, is around. And, uh, you know, I have good neighbors. Um, they're, they're, they're real active in the neighborhood. Uh, they like to both of them really like to garden a lot and they've got you know as you can see like really pretty gardens they have like they raise chickens and they have like so you know fresh chicken eggs and stuff like that um tim's even got a cow and so cow you know he can have like his own milk and they can make their own butter and stuff like that i mean they're uh and they also exercise a lot they're very uh healthy pretty pretty uh admirable qualities and so you know um as you saw in that picture there like the things that they they eat when they have like dinner it's like wow you know that's that looks really good that looks really healthy for you um, um me on the other hand though i'm more of a you know a guy like that and so it's you know when they when they when they uh come over to my house you know let's say i'm going to play cards or something like that and have those guys come over to play some cards um i think they'll eat a real big dinner before they come over and so uh, the other day we were out at the fence and, and uh, you know, we're all hanging out. Uh, we're all social distancing, of course, you know, but we're hanging out at the fence and we got Tim, we got Chuck and they're, and they're, and they look at each other at one point, you know, we're out there drinking, drinking a beer and ha hanging out and all of a sudden, you know, they look at each other and go like, Hey Jim, you know, can we talk to you? And then at that point, when somebody says, can we talk to you or can I talk to you? It's like, Ooh, what are you, what's going on? And they're going like, Hey, you know, you know, we just noticed that, you know, you eat a lot of junk food and um, we we just, we've come up with a diet for you. And so, you know, we wondered if we can like email this diet to you and it's got like, you know, vegetables and, and meats and, and uh, all these different, you know, things that are going to be you know, really good for you. And so at that point, I'm like, whoa, 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 you know, what what is happening? It's like an intervention happening, right? And so my question for you, and if we were in class right here, we'd stop and just basically, you know, ask the question, you know, can my neighbors tell me what I'm allowed to eat and then why? And so I want you to think about that for a second. So please give that a thought. I'm going to pause it and I'll come back to you in just a second. Okay, hopefully you, you've thought about that, you know. Um, and I, I, I would love to get your thoughts on that, you know, in a classroom. <laughs> but essentially what I think it boils down to is, is like, like, no, you know. Chuck and Tim, you guys are well intentioned, but you know you're not the boss of me. You know, mind your business. And so, um, and 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 at, when it comes to the why of that question, you know, why can't they tell me, or why can't they tell a neighbor of what they're allowed to eat? You know, the I think the question is answered by you know who has the authority to tell you what you can and you can't, you know, consume. And so, I do all that for the uh, for the purpose of what. Uh, what we're looking at here is whether artificial intelligence should be regulated because 
I don't I want you to think about what does it mean if an industry is regulated and again I would you know in class I would call some call on somebody say like, hey what what do you think this means what do you think this means and essentially uh, as you as you dig into this um, regulation is nothing new uh, regulation of course has is used widely in a lot of different applications a lot of different industries but what regulation typically means is that there is a boss and so in this case it means that there are industries which are controlled by some set of rules that's typically going to be uh, those rules are going to be drafted by either the government or an entity which governs that particular industry and Again, this is not anything new. Um, and some examples I have for you, if you guys look at my notes, for example, in the, uh, in the notes in this PowerPoint presentation as well as the notes uh, for this topic, um, some different industries I've identified uh, that have you know, long-standing regulatory bodies that, that manage them. You have things like what you see on the screen there. Um, I would like for you to think about that because this is this is part of at the this is really at the heart of what we're talking about with artificial intelligence. Um, you know, uh, I want I want to let me pause this for just a minute. Let me open up the issue analysis for this topic. I'll be right back. Okay, this is the issue analysis for topic four, and as you come down here to question number three, in it, what I ask you is to think about these industries I'm showing you now which are over here in the, the presentation and um, you know as you look at these different industries in the presentation one of those may jump out at you is like wow I'm, I'm glad that is regulated that makes sense um, that is a just use of authority of a power to, to, to regulate something to make sure you know X Y or Z I want you to identify one of those and explain to me why you think that is a good thing to regulate. And also, I'd like for you to look at this and, you know, which in, which of the things in here do you think may be regulated uh, unjustly or unduly? Which which of these could we do without regulation on it? So, and if there's something else that is regulated that's not on my list that you want to, to chime in about, that's fine too. But uh, this is one of the questions in the issue analysis I wanted to point out from the presentation where this is going to uh, impact you as you as you do your issue analysis but let's jump back to the uh, the presentation okay so here's that list of things that um, you know are are have been regulated for a long time there's the federal body that's the easiest thing for me to you know point out to you the federal regulatory body which is responsible for coming up with rules and then and then enforcing those rules for those particular industries and as you guys move forward with um, that that question on the issue analysis these are the things I want you to, to think about if there's something else which is regulated which is not listed again you're, you're, you're welcome to uh, talk about it as well but these are um, you know getting you to think about what regulation is and then examples of regulated regulated industries that's what was my point here Okay, so let's move on. Um, now I want to start to focus this in specifically on technology because now we've covered the overarching things and I want to start to tailor this and really focus on, on technology. To that end, I want to introduce you to somebody else. All right, now this is another one of my neighbors. This is Billy. He is uh, he's Mark's kid. He's another neighbor. And uh, this guy lives across the street. And so uh, this is Billy. And as you can imagine, you know, like I've already told you, you know, everybody's hanging out a lot more than we usually do. Um, everybody's been doing yard work. Everybody's been doing catching up on projects uh, on their houses. So there's a lot of uh, tools and, and, and power equipment and stuff like that being used and, and brought out and cleaned up um, for a number of different chores, which, which we've all, you know, been leaving uh, not doing because it's been cold and wet and etc. So uh, anyway, not you know just in the last couple of days, um, my neighbor Billy, he basically got one of his uh, his dad's tools, one of his screwdrivers, and he decided to um, decorate some of the cars. 
<laughs> on the block. And so, um, <laughs> so my question for you, with that in mind, as you think about, you know, our our, our guy here, Billy, taking a, a, a tool and uh, using it to basically deface vehicles like this, um, you know, should we, as a society, make screwdrivers and bolts and nails illegal? You know, obviously they're they're being used by vandals such as Mr. Billy here to uh, to write on cars. And so, uh, what are your thoughts? And that's where I would you know pause and ask for you to uh, to answer this. Now at this point, I. I would uh, would hope and usually when I when I do something like this I'll have you know uh, every once in a while I'll get somebody who who will get really upset <laughs> and one guy uh, about about a semester ago who I asked this question he goes no <laughs> it was pretty funny um, and so it's it's you know a rhetorical question but you know should we make these these you know useful things like nails and screws and, and, and uh, screwdrivers and make them illegal because of, you know, punk kids like this. No, we, we should not. Um, but what about if we asked a different question, sort of a similar but different question, should we just take those things and then regulate them through some sort of body? And then what would your, your answer be to that question and why? I would, I would be interested in your answers here. Again, I wish we were together so I could actually you hear from you on this, but um, I suspect that the answer from, from, from everybody would be pretty much a no, we don't need regulation either on screwdrivers and bolts and nails. And I would presume that the answer that to, to your answer of no on that would be basically, well, it's, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you, yes, you have punks like this guy who may ride on a car, but how often does that happen? That's like, you know, one in a million kind of thing, right? And so, I, I would assume that, you know, most of you would say no, just based on the fact that this is a very isolated incident that happened, and, uh, you know, that's an overreaction, that's, that's not necessary. Um, so let me bring this on into the exact question we're asking with this topic. And we're asking, you know, should artificial intelligence then be subject to regulation? And the reason I ask this and the reason I wanted to bring this issue before you was because, uh, as I've read about it, as as I've read about artificial intelligence, as I've investigated it, and as I've spoken to people who are experts in it, which I am not, but as I've spoken to experts in it, uh, there is a, a a theme which has appeared as I as I read and as I talk to people that that work with this, and so. The people on your screen, these are people I consider to be experts. Uh, you have Dr. Thad Cruz on the left. You have uh, David Edelman on the right. And he is one of the authors of uh, one of the things I've asked you to read. But uh, just let me jump over to some bio information so you can see who these people are and why what they say maybe has some merit. And so I want you to, uh, to at least think about it. Okay, this is Dr. Cruz's information is bio information uh, for the college he is a teacher right down the hall from me um, some of you have maybe taken CIS 141 classes with him or or business data analytics classes with him uh, super smart guy uh, he got his doctorate at Vanderbilt back in 95 and he was doing artificial intelligence work then and so he's been working with AI stuff for decades um, and so when I talk to him, and he starts to, to uh, he's come in and, and taught classes for me uh, in 141, uh, where he's, he's talked specifically about this, especially about natural language processing, which is something that, uh, like your Alexa and your Siri programs do, that's, that's called nat natural language processing, where they can um, talk to you, and uh, you can talk to it, and it can understand what you're saying, and so that's, that's really hard to uh, to program in a computer and that's what you're doing is you're writing code to allow a computer to to uh, not only hear but also talk back and so that's incredibly difficult and so um, he has spoken to my classes and, and so I, I highly value the 
you know what he has to, to think about these things um, the David Edelman guy uh, he is the author of the second thing I've asked you guys to read as a required uh, you know a reading assignment and this guy is currently at MIT um, this is one information about him from Wikipedia if you want to go over to the uh, MIT page where it has a you know a little bit better picture of him and this one it looks like his you know his mom dressed him and gave him the haircut but on this one he's he's looking pretty pretty sharp um, this guy's really sharp uh, he has doctorates in uh, international uh, relations I believe from uh, from Oxford he went to Yale uh, he has recently been working uh, at the highest levels up in the White House and so this guy has has uh, really been instrumental in some of the the national policy that we have about technology with regard to cybersecurity and and some other things and so this guy is uh, very much in touch with um, artificial intelligence and so what both of these guys what what Edelman and Dr. Cruz when you get them if you if you were to uh, read Edelman's work or if you were to see Dr. Cruz you know having a cup of coffee somewhere and say hey Dr. Cruz what do you think about you know artificial intelligence one of the first things that they, they start to talk about um, is that this is a it's a tool it is nothing more than just a new tool and so as we go back to that that PowerPoint presentation what these two guys will, will will tell you is that this technology is really cool and its abilities are very very powerful I mean it's um, and when you look at the implementations that we have looked at already in day one the the, the power uh, of them to influence and impact our society are are profound but AI is a tool and so I, I think because of who I'm hearing that from I want to share that with you and really emphasize that with you Experts, you know, trusted experts, in my opinion, basically are saying, hey, this is a tool. This is not some Ultron kind of thing. This is not some sentient being. This is not some, uh, uh, this is not like the, the discovery of fire or something like that. This is just, this is a, this is some improvements on existing math and computer code that has been there, which has finally gotten to the point where it's starting to do some really useful stuff for us. And so these are some things that, uh, uh, are presented from it's, it's a viewpoint from some experts I think you guys would be uh, you know would, would want to hear okay so what do what do experts say about specifically about regulation and AI and I've, I've put together um, some short articles for you to to look at about that and what they say is different uh, it's not so much of, of a yes and no thing, but what they say is different as far as like um, if you were going to do it, how would you do it? Why would you do it? And so that differs from person to person. And the people I want you to hear from with that uh, article wise are from uh, the people that you see pictured here. And I want to, I'll jump over to their, their articles and their bio pages uh, for these two guys right here in just a minute. But um, what they offer as advice differs and so I think it's it's interesting to look at you know three uh, current um, policymakers CEOs kind of people out there you know making this technology and what their thoughts are on this and so uh, let me do that okay I'm gonna start with Edelman because I've already introduced you to him and you know shown you his his pedigree or talked to you about his pedigree is already um, and as you go through it's, it's only a three page it's not even like a three full page it's about two and a half page article um, and this is uh, this article basically is a it's it's reflection upon a new a, on a draft for some some national policy from the federal government and so as you as you read this as you you'll see that there are some links in here this is a PDF document, but there are some links like this new federal regulatory guidance that came out of the White House. If you if you hover over that where it says new federal regulatory guidance, if you want to click on that, what if you click on that, it opens up the uh, the link for that uh, that policy. And uh, so this these are his thoughts on what the federal government is 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 uh, basically thinking about doing with regard to artificial intelligence, and so. Um, as you go through and read this this article, and I want you to do that, 
um, the way I'm trying to encourage you to do that, if I'm going to go back to the uh, the issue analysis again, I have a couple questions in here. In question four, I ask you to look at Edelman's and Pichai's ideas and compare and contrast those for me. Basically, you know, how are they similar? How are they different? And uh, so that's how I want to get you to to look at these articles and, and think about what they're recommending and how again how are they similar how are they different um, so as far as big ideas go I'm not, you're going to read it so you, and do your analysis of it so I'm not going to tell you everything that's in here that's you, you can do that for yourself um, but what I will point out to you I think uh, it's, it's it's interesting that uh, Edelman points out you know, he's, he's an MIT guy really in charge of like AI stuff and what MIT is doing with AI but he points out he's he makes no, he has no problem pointing out, hey, AI has some problems. Um, AI can be biased. Um, here are some examples where AI has been biased. And so he's, he's, he doesn't at all point, you know, try and paint like, hey, everything's ro rosy. This is a perfect technology. No, he, he is saying, hey, this thing has some problems. It has warts, but it's still, it's something that uh, should be pursued. I've scrolled on down to like the about the middle of it and I think it's interesting as he is making his analysis of what the the White House has has recommended um, I think it's through the Office of Management and Budget I think the OMB is what the, uh, the where the recommendations came from I think but the uh, he, he is recommending that uh, current consumer protections need to be uh, uh, those still need to be embraced. Uh, those still need to be basically uh, protected. And so, you know, and he goes through and he talks about um, why that would be. You know, if you had AI and AI was broken or AI was biased, that may damage um, individuals in this way. And by having, you know, the existing consumer protections in place that exist from government policy, existing government policy, by just applying that to the digital realm, that would allow for this AI to then be um, held accountable and fixed for that. And so that's one of the things that he gets into. Um, as you move down the document, I think it's interesting how he talks about how to do that. And I think that, um, I think he's really looking for, he's recommending tailored, specific regulation when regulation comes from the government it shouldn't be tried to cover everything and 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 all sorts of as, every aspect of ai he's thinking this needs to be very tailored in the natural language processing realm boom in this area boom in this area boom so having very specific sets of regulation as opposed to trying to do it on a, on a broad level and so that's one of the things i took away from this edelman article that i thought was really important and so i wanted you guys to you know again it's short and you can read through it, please do. Um, but as you do, I think you'll, I hope what you'll do is, is uh, see the, you know, kind of the main ideas coming from, from him um, with regard to the, that. Okay, now I'm jumping over so we can talk about our, our other two authors. Um, this, by the way, is the, when you click on that link in the, in the PDF document that I showed you a second ago, this is the draft of that document from, uh, from the federal government about, um, you know, guidance for regulation of artificial intelligence. And so our next author is Sundar Pichai. He is the CEO of Alphabet, which is basically the parent company of Google, if you can imagine that. I mean, if Google having a parent company, but it does. And he was over at Google, but the, uh, you know, just in December of uh, 2019, the, uh, the, Long, the founders of Google basically stepped back from Alphabet and they promoted him up from Google to be now run Alphabet. But uh, Alphabet has been doing some really cool artificial intelligence uh, work for a while. And um, that's where an optional article comes in. Now, let me show you where that comes from. Okay, so over here at the Blackboard site for Topic 4, you know, there are the four required reading assignments. There's a fifth thing if you want to look at it. 
and it's and I hope you will. This is again from Fortune magazine. This is a thing that prompted me to to really start digging into this whole topic. Um, and you only need to look at the beginning of it. Um, it's like a, a when I got this from the library's website, it pulled down 15 pages, and it only only the first eight or nine are actually what I was looking at for this this issue. But in it, if you look at that article um, from Fortune, as you go through here, it basically talks about how uh, Microsoft is trying to very quickly get into the artificial intelligence game, and the other players in it have been there for quite a long time, including Alphabet, which is this guy, you know, which is what Sundar Pichai is the uh, the CEO of. So this gives you some information about um, what his company has been doing. So as you as you read, if you look through there, you'll see how is Alphabet. Uh, what are some examples of things that Alphabet has already done that, with regard to um, successful alpha, uh, artificial intelligent applications? Okay, so here is that the third thing I want you to read. Why must why we must regulate artificial intelligence? That's from ProQuest PDF. If you look at that, it is this very short, uh, about a page and a half bit of text from Sundar Pichai. It's, um, it's from the Financial Times uh, in January of 2020. And as you go through it and you look at it, uh, what he's talking about in it is that again. I think it's it's interesting. He immediately points out, "Hey, technology is not perfect." You know, I'm a, I'm a technology guy. I'm a pro, and I, this is my livelihood. But we've got some problems, and we we recognize that we have some problems. He points that stuff out. He goes back to, um, uh, he's a really interesting guy. If you look at his bio, and and in my notes for for this this topic, if you come down here to the, the day two stuff come there to day two when it starts talking about these different uh, authors uh, look at this businessinsider.com story about him and when you do that uh, it talks about how when he he was a kid grew up in India um, his it, and uh, he has risen so high within you know and now being CEO of alphabet it's pretty amazing. Uh, he went to Stanford for free after he basically um, studied, I think, metallurgy or something like that over in India. Um, so he's, he's you know, like he remembers like when they got a phone. And like, so imagine going being from in a family where like uh, they didn't have a phone, they didn't have a, a washing machine, they didn't have other things like that, just basic things that we're, a lot of people are used to. And now he's a guy running like AI, an AI company. Pretty, pretty amazing. Um, very smart guy. Um, and in this article that he's uh, talking about, this, this reading assignment three I've asked you to look at, um, he, he points out, yeah, we've got some problems um, with with technology. But beyond that, um, the ways that we can we can regulate this, and he, he is pretty adamant that it's a, a super powerful tool. You know, the things that it can do are potentially harmful to uh, to society, so it should be regulated, in his opinion. Um, he pushes for, again, existing government regulations, and he points some of those out. He says, here are some things from Europe, for example, that are probably going to be a good foundation. If we built on that and then tailored that to AI, that would probably be good. And so as you read through this, uh, again, short article. That's what I'm. I want you to be thinking about. I want you to compare and contrast this. You know, how is this similar? How is this different than what you're hearing from Edelman over here? So that's one of your charges as you do that issue analysis. How are these two guys, who are in you know similar boats, um, how are their ideas similar? How are they different? All right. So you have one more person that, that I've asked you to hear from and that's this third guy over here his name is Oren Etzioni he is a um, he's an artificial intelligence researcher he is an a uh, he's a computer professor um, accomplished guy he's got and let me show you his information so he is a this is from the uh, Institute where he currently is the CEO uh, it's the Allen Institute for AI and 
he was a you know he started his career basically as a professor uh, a computer science professor at the University of Washington and you know he's been working with AI a very long time just like Dr. Cruz has uh, he's done things like give TED talks and if you want to watch a pretty good TED talk there's a link to it right there I mean this is one of the uh, the link to his bio is is in the uh, my notes and this TED talk link is is right here from there come over there there's the TED talk so if you'd like to hear directly from this guy you're welcome to do that but um, he wrote an article back in 2017 talking about how he thinks artificial intelligence may be regulated well and what I think what's interesting about it is the the approach that he takes to it and so he recommends three rules for artificial intelligence so let me jump over to his article again it's short this is reading assignment four and it's an opinion from the New York Times op-ed page basically how to regulate you know artificial intelligence as you come through he gives three different ideas about how to effectively regulate AI and what he says is that AI must be subject to the full gamut of laws that apply to the human operators so if your computer does something that's illegal you're still held responsible you can't just blame it on a computer he says that an AI system must clearly disclose that it is not a human I think we've talked about that when I showed you guys from day one um, when we were in class and we had that chat bot and I asked the chat bot you know I said hey are you a human and it said no I'm not um, you know according to like these rules right here I should have it should have said hey at the very beginning I am not a human um, I'm a you know how can I help you so it could be even even clearer in that regard the third rule he, he uh, proposed was that AI systems cannot retain or disclose confidential information without explicit approval from the source of that information so you guys have, have mentioned in class many times about um, Alexa and Google and Siri and how they listen all the time and how that you know potentially uh, is, is you know that bothers you and so with his rules in place um, AI technology could not take any of that information and use it without your explicit um, permission to do so and again that may be in the form of like an end user agreement where if you turn it on like if, if you read the paper when you open a box and you turn it on you you agree to it you know something like that but that's those are three ideas introduced by uh, Mr. Etzioni that I think are, are, are interesting and they're definitely different than uh, the ideas you're hearing from uh, presented in these two because they're, they're talking more about policy over here where he's talking about you know broader things here um, I do have a question for you in the issue analysis about his his work as well as you can see it's question number five and I'd like to you know of those three rules which do you think is which do you feel is the, the most important and why and so that's what I'm asking you to think about with that in uh, and, and that question and that's what that pertains to is this the three rules he, he identifies in here so let me jump over to our, our PowerPoint and, and conclude okay so hopefully you you've learned something new uh, you've heard from regulatory ideas about specifically about AI from three different AI professionals um, I of course would open it up for questions at this point and uh, if you have questions please contact me uh, again you have my phone number it's on the uh, it's on the blackboard site and so uh, I look forward to seeing your thoughts as you guys write your issue analysis if you have questions about how to to work on these things this is the first time we you know this is the first issue back you know as, as, a, as we start this online work so please be in touch with me let me know how I can help you and uh, I look forward to seeing your work so thank you